back at WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We are into the summertime, and we got baseball. We got some football around the corner. We got a new NBA champion. But it's always golf season for Don Moeller, who joins us now. All of our Baltimore Positive broadcast brought to you by our friends of Wise Markets and our Wise Conversations. And, of course, our friends at State Fair. I got my State Fair Catonsville shirt on right now. I got to get over there for some Brussels sprouts. I've been meaning to get over there for dinner. Uh, my wife's back home now, so we got to get over there, get ourselves a little steak, a little uh, crab cakes, delicious crab cakes at State Fair. We made a stop over there. Our friends at Moeller and Gary Realty still actively pursuing selling my condominium. It's 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 a bear market, a bull market, all in the same way. I don't I don't know what to say. Don Moeller is here. Don, it's golf season, uh, or golf season's over, but it's golf season for those of us who play, right? The major thing <laughs> is now uh, toward the back end, and uh, you, you love having Ed on the program. We love talking golf with Ed. It's local. Ed, I didn't even know you were over at Forest Park. I thought the whole time you might have been over at Carroll Park. Yep, yep, no, no, I'm definitely Forest Park, actually close to State Fair. I might have to go over there for lunch myself <laughs> today. <laughs> right, right around the corner from Kernan Hospital. Uh, yes, sir. Well, I, as I said, Nestor Forest Park, near and dear to my heart. Well, we promote here. the Classic Five, and I don't know what five he's on. You know, you could be on any one any given day, right? Yeah, yeah well, Ed, that is Ed, correct. Ed, Ed Miller, the outstanding uh, head pro at, at Forest Park, the Classic Five. Let's start with that, Ed, before we even get into the year in majors, because – I've said before, but let, let you extol the virtues of the classic five, because I, you know, N- Nestor mentioned uh, Clifton Park. We got Carroll Park. We got Forest Park. We've got Mount Pleasant. We got Pine Ridge. I mean, these are five terrific and very, very different golf courses. Absolutely. Very different uh, in layout, uh, you know, some of it in length. But the best part about the classic five is regardless of your ability. Uh, every golf course can play from a, a beginner golfer to a scratch level golfer for sure. Just play the right set of tees. Each golf course has something unique to offer in terms of views and uh, aesthetics, but uh, always open and uh, serving the people of Baltimore. Hey, teach me a quick history lesson on this for, for the courses. How long? I mean, they've been there from the beginning of time, right? These were deemed golf areas back when Baltimore city was a big city and the suburbs were Dundalk was a long way away 150 years ago. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, Clifton is uh, probably our oldest, our oldest one. It's over a hundred years old. I know forest park where I'm at, we've been here since 1934. So uh, yeah, we've been, uh, you know, between all five of us, we've been around for close to a hundred years serving Baltimore and uh, yeah, it's been a good run so far. Well, a lot of cities don't have golf mm-hmm. courses in the middle of them like that because they weren't plotted out that way the way we were Correct. 100 years ago, right? Yeah, usually, yeah. Most of the golf courses are definitely uh, – they try to find them a nice little country spot, so to speak. So it is very unique in that we have uh, Urban Golf, uh, four of them specifically, definitely right in the city. So well, I used to unique drive challenges. through uh, Lake Clifton and Clifton Park. Like in the summer, I would always drive through, and it's the only golf course I knew. Because the number 22 bus would go through it. I'm from Dundalk. I didn't go to Rocky. Uh, I never saw a golf club in my life until I was 18 years old, right? So I just that, – that golf course was the thing that introduced me to golf. I thought that's what golf was, taking the 22 through there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you you know Ed, that, I don't think that – that's an interesting point that Nestor raises. I don't think it gets – I don't think we talk about it enough, and that is the sense that golf courses are really – oases in the midst of our urban areas. They provide green space. They provide a sense of calm. I mean, you look at Forest Park and Clifton and Carroll. I mean, they're right in the middle of urban areas and they they provide this sort of sense of serenity, do they not? Until you start to hit the ball. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Until you got to chase that golf ball. But no, you're absolutely correct, Don. It is a I always like to call it a 200 acre oasis in the middle of the city or on the edges of the city. But uh, once you step foot onto the golf course, it's uh, you kind of forget that you're in the city, except for at Clifton, you got the beautiful sight lines of the city uh, buildings and stuff like that. But it is absolutely an oasis. We provide a nice green space, like you said, clean oxygen and, uh, you know, a place for the animals to live as well. Well, Ed, I would say this to you, having as a kid gone through there, my friend Ed Lauer, who plays guitar, but he knows that Ed grew up right on the corner of, you know, I guess it's uh, Bel Air and Erdman, right? You know, right? Uh, Little Flower, uh, Bel Air Edison, I guess that area is called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always think to myself, 
Because I grew up in Dundalk, and I always talk about lacrosse this way. Nobody in my neighborhood played lacrosse. Like, Muller's got all this lacrosse background in West Baltimore and all that. Nobody in my neighborhood played lacrosse. Nobody played soccer. I played tennis. There were a couple of kids that played tennis, a couple of kids that played roller hockey. But I would think in the city, you grew up in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and that, you know, in those neighborhoods, to think that you would walk up, find a golf ball, and learn how to hit it, that it would come to you in a way that you could walk to the edge of your street because it's in the city. I don't know there's a lot of that going on anymore. I mean, golf feels to me like you got to have clubs. You got to practice. You got to have a range. You got to get in a car. You got to go somewhere. I would think for a lot of Baltimoreans during that period of time, these courses were places at the edge of the neighborhood where the kids could walk up and learn. And it would come to them in a way that it didn't come to me being in Dundalk. Absolutely. That's uh, it's neat you say that. But talking to some of my my regulars in the in the senior group that I have out here, uh, ironically, a lot of them will tell you that's actually how they learn golf, uh, trying to sneak onto the golf course, maybe practice or play a few holes. Uh, caddy for golfers, even though we're public golf courses, there are tons of the tons of my seniors that tell me all the time that they. See, used to you keep saying your seniors, the and that's interesting because they've had a whole <laughs> lifetime of this, right? They did yes, discover sir. it yeah, in that yeah. way, right? Absolutely, absolutely. But you know, you know, it is funny, isn't it, Ed? Boy, it's funny how we 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 touch on different topics. Guys of certain age, my age certainly, people know Caddyshack as the movie, right? Bill Murray <laughs> and, yeah, and, yeah. and the Gopher. You know, that's what they. Yeah. But truly, the Caddyshack was a thing. Young kids would go mm -hmm. and hang at the Caddyshack and hope they would get called to make a trip or two around the uh, eighteen holes, right? Absolutely. It was a great way to make some money, uh, to meet people and like uh, shoveling, network, so like, to speak. like shoveling yeah. snow or, you know, yeah, so Ouija boys, like literally, yeah, but, yeah, but for yeah, golf yeah. courses, right? Literally throw two that bags. Is, that is Young correct. kids that could throw correct. two bags on and, and have a, a See, that nice... was something that never occurred to me. I didn't have a golf course up the street. We shoveled snow. I delivered newspapers. You know that, Don, the Dundalk Indian. Yeah, but as grass, a kid yeah. <laughs> to walk into a golf course and say, Mr. Can I carry your bags? Yeah. That, that's just you something sit? that feels old fashioned to me. You sit yeah, in yeah. the caddy shack and you wait for Mr. Jones to say, Hey, I want little Nestor. He did a nice job. He read some nice putts for me uh, <laughs> last week. So uh, I want to get Nestor again. Well, Ed, yep. it has been, and I always throw the, uh, the players championship into the mix. When I talk mm -hmm. about majors, I, I mean, in terms of if you're a golfer and storylines, <laughs> this one's oh. been pretty remarkable, right? Oh, it's been a great year for the majors in golf. You're absolutely correct. You know, uh, obviously you have Phil winning uh, at the oldest person to ever win a major. Then you, you go to the under, other end of the spectrum with, say, Colin Morikawa, who under 25 years old, just won his second major. So you, you had a great mix this year in the five tournaments. Uh, kind of like, a, was that um, a passing of the guard, so to speak? There's oh, definitely a lot of young talent out there right now. Well, there was a time when it was just Woods and Mickelson for a long period, right? Now it's yes. every week when we, talk, we, we we bring you on before these majors, it's like there's 30 guys that can win any of these things, literally. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's a good 30 to 40 guys every week. But if you look at the top 10 in, in, in general, Nestor, it's definitely uh, – it seems like the same five or six names have been popping up on this leaderboard. So I think, uh, you know, the, the, the generation of Woods and Mickelson, obviously I'm a fan of that, but we're definitely moving into the next one with Jordan Spieth, uh, maybe Brooks Kepka, obviously Colin Morikawa, only 24 years old. So well, you know, the future looks in, good. Lost in the shuffle. Let, let's start with the most recent major because that's on, on everyone's mind. I mean, when you say Morikawa is 24, I mean, to give that in, put that into pers some perspective, McElroy had won four by the time he was 25 years old. And our good friend John Feinstein talks about everybody thought, you know, Roy was going to win quickly. He was going to get the 9, 10, 11. And then all of a sudden, you might be talking about him in Tiger Woods kind of territory. Well, now all of a sudden, we wake up. It's seven years later, and Rory hasn't won another major. It's, it's amazing how quickly it, it comes and it goes. Now, here's, here's Kyle Marikawa. He's 1 2. He's 24. The only three guys to have won uh, four majors by the age of 25 are uh, Rory, who we mentioned, mm -hmm. and Jack and Tiger. So yep. Colin has a chance to do that and, and break this kid's game down for us, Ed, a little bit. And I want you to start with – I want you to be the golf pro here. All right. Start all right. with that takeaway. That takeaway is one of the slowest 
<laughs> takeaways I've seen. Talk to me about whether that's something you would teach or is that something that just works for him? Because, my goodness, you can almost fall asleep in his takeaway. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. He's got definitely got the second slowest takeaway, I believe, in golf. But, um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily try to teach that, Don. I think that's uh, kind of a, a personal preference. Um, but I do – he does have a nice slow – takeaway um but when you actually diagnose his swing and you look at it where the club is as far as a uh, swing plane and stuff like that uh his swing is actually pretty perfect um t to green he looks like he will have no problems for the next 10 years getting uh from t to green his swing is like in my opinion i think his swing is better than spieth you know but uh morikawa's got a he's got an awesome swing so he's gonna and, be there he, for a while and he, and he appears to have Again, you've worked – I see you've worked with a lot of juniors as well. Yes, sir. And you talk a lot – I'm sure you, when you work with juniors, you talk a lot about temperament. Uh, mm -hmm. This kid is unflappable, right? I mean, yeah. he just yeah. – this is amazing. He came down the last four or five holes of a major championship like he was playing a five-hour Nassau at his club. <laughs> You're absolutely correct. I think the backswing, I think his walk, it's – uh. It's, it's definitely his personality. He's very Zen like out there. And that's why uh, I'm becoming a big fan of his. And I really, I really do think the, the best is still to come for him. So well, it's been a summer of that, right? For, for the bucks the other night to win, to have a star is born here and someone that no one can root against for golf to have new names, new faces to come into this um, a name that we weren't talking about a couple of years ago and, and a 24 year old name, as you pointed out. Absolutely. And uh, you know, to, to kind of add on to like what Don is saying, um, I know Morikawa does not have four majors yet, but uh, he became one of the maybe two golfers of all time to win two majors, both the first time he's ever played in it. Um, he joined uh, a list of youngest players with two majors that include Gene Sarazen, Bobby Jones, Tiger Woods, Jack Nicklaus, uh, and Rory. So, yeah, I think he's definitely the good real deal. <laughs> yeah, very well, good company. Gonna, I, mean, right. who will, I mean, and now one, one of the – I think one of the best things the tour did, I don't know if, how long it's been now, maybe 15 years. I should, I should have looked that up. Maybe, you know, but I, I, however long the FedEx cup has been in play. So now we're going to get serious. And one of the really exciting things, he's obviously going to be at the top of everybody's list to yep. win the FedEx cup along with Jordan and, and Justin Thomas and some others, and mm -hmm. maybe Phil flying the flag for the old guys. <laughs> uh, one of the most exciting things to happen here in a long time is we're going to have the BMW championship right here in Baltimore County. What does that mean for golf, Ed? Uh, well, I think it's great for golf. I think it's, uh, you know, technically I know they've had a couple of events at congressional, but this is the first PJ tour event to come to Baltimore in over 60 years. 60. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, ironically, the last one was at Mount Pleasant in the uh, early sixties. One the, of the uh, classic five. Open. But when yeah, I think yeah, about yeah, in, yeah, in our yeah. lifetime, we, we had a big LPGA here for a while, right? Annika yep. Sorenson one. I remember and that I'm going back 30 years now. Right. I was at the paper when that happened, right? So Reg Murphy was the, the Sun publisher. He loved golf. The Sun sponsored, like, did all of that. But it's it's been a day, right? Seniors, but that's it, right? Yep, yep. No, see, we had the seniors, and we've had, uh, like you said, the ladies. So this is the first big men's event in a long time. And like Don said, the fact that this is a playoff event where uh, it's only going to it's going to be the top 70 players in the, in the playoffs, so it's going to be – the cream of the crop again coming to Baltimore. Uh, Caves Valley is a is an awesome location. Fairly new golf course, I guess. When you under say cream of the old. crop, will everybody, all the names you brought, they'll all be there. Will there be anybody that skips out on that that you could? Uh, Woods, Mickle. I mean, hey, who's who's yep. not going of the big big names? Who's not going to be here? Well, well, hey, well Ed, that's pick up on Nestor's question and maybe educate. Mm -hmm. That's a good point because I assume that everybody knows that stuff. Mm -hmm. Talk about how you you need to be in the top seventy to get yep. there and earn these points. Walk us through that. Okay, well, this is uh, definitely uh, like you said the, the the FedEx, the playoffs in golf have been around a little over ten years now. Um, and actually, Nestor, the players are accumulating points this whole year based on where they finish and how many wins uh, in a few By the weeks. Way, to play you off. are talking to an idiot. I have no, I, I don't <laughs> care about this. I don't know. About, I literally, I just, it's just not. I'm, I'm doing crab cakes next month. I, right. I, I move my place to other places. So you are really educating me. So treat right, me like good. the idiot I am, please. All right, all right, we will. Why so we the do playoffs? The show. <laughs> playoffs are new to golf. Uh, I think it's a great thing. It's going to help. Uh, you know. 
uh, it helps the fall coverage, so to speak, or the end of the year, because uh, like Don was talking about, the majors are over. So in the past, once the majors are over, you're kind of like, okay, well, what's next? Well, now the PGA Tour added the playoffs, and uh, it'll start off with the first, the top 125 players on the money list will qualify, or the FedEx Cup point list will qualify for the playoffs. And after each tournament, there's only three of them, but each tournament they'll cut down. Uh, by the time they get to the BMW, it will only be the top 70 players on the point list that are allowed to come and play at Caves. And most of the time, once you get to that, the top 70, everybody will show up because the winner, uh, once they win the playoffs, wins a cool $10 million on top of whatever else they win. Yeah, just, so, just that's an incentive. Million. Yeah, it's a small <laughs> incentive. So everybody is definitely going to be there. Um, but based on the fact that you need points, uh, there will be players that will not you know, obviously Tiger Woods has been hurt and has missed the whole year. Uh, even if Tiger were to come back, he probably wouldn't have not have enough points to get into the playoffs. Um, you know, so right now everybody is jockeying to try to get into that top one. So there are some legendary guys that only like fly in and play majors now that they're not. They're just famous golfers. They're not a part. Tiger Woods will not be here. You, you promise. Yeah, yeah, that. that is correct. Well, that I mean, when you I say the, the top golfers to... in the world will be here. And the yeah, first yeah. thing a kid from Dundalk's like, well, if I go out there, where's Tiger? No, yeah, no. Yeah, Tiger's yeah. still trying to learn how to walk again. Walk I mean, again, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He got to do that. That's first. right. I forgot. Yeah. Will yeah. yeah. oh, Mickelson be part of that or no? Is he too far? Uh, away? No, no. He's uh right now. Mickelson is def. He's in. He's he's about fifty fifth right now. So he's in the top seven. Well, I know so some long, of these guys. This is the thing yeah. I do know about golf. The the really wealthy guys only come in and they're like Andre the Giant. They only come and wrestle yeah. once a year. You know, they don't wrestle on the preliminary cards and. Mm. I, I, I do know that some guys are such big stars that they won't be here. And that's sort of counterintuitive, which is why I wanted to bring it up because yeah. I think there are some big, big names in golf that you're thinking mm. maybe, maybe not. I just don't know the difference. I'm assuming all the Kepkas and yeah. all those well, people Kep will be here. Yeah. Kepka's in the top 20 right now. He should sure. definitely be there. Um, you know, some it's of the all names based are on points, Nestor. That's as, right. As, as, as Ed said, it's, it's points that you earn, Every week and every week, every Monday, you know, they update them. You can see them at the at the end of a Sunday and you can see, as Ed said, and who the top 125 are. And last few tournaments, people are scrambling to get into that 125. Right, Ed? Yeah, that is correct. Like a good name that everybody knows right now to give you an idea, Nestor, is uh, Ricky Fowler. You know, Ricky Fowler's obviously had a bad year uh, in, by his standards, um, but he has played in the FedEx Cup playoff every year for the last 10 years. But right now, Ricky is sitting at 124 on the money on the point list. So he needs to definitely start playing some good golf to make sure he's into the playoffs. Just why I bring you on it. Cause I, I, you know, I, 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 I put that out there and you start giving me names of guys that if you're a Ricky Fowler fan and you're, you look at this, you're like, he's going to be golfing at caves. I can go out there. I can watch his swing. I can stay. Maybe. You, you <laughs> Maybe. Know, it's, it's like saying I'm an Oriole fan. I want to see them play in the, play oh that's right the regular season they have to they have to get there they have to earn well, it. so you are teaching me that part of it and, yeah, and i go. think what bringing up ricky points out nestor and, and it is what those of us who love the game love so much about it is it is a really really hard sport i mean you you mentioned that for years it was tiger and phil you forget and maybe you weren't watching it back upon a day but early in tiger's career there was a young man named david duvall and ed will remember david david duvall was the next great thing and it was supposed to be tiger and dave they did one of the first under the light matches well, tiger was sergio Mowen. garcia after that right sergio mm -hmm. right. now sergio's gone on to still have a, a you know a better than average career david duvall duvall for the most part ed right yeah. He can't play anymore. He nope. early in his career, whatever, almost like Ian Baker Finch, who was one of the great players in the world, who suddenly couldn't break eighty. I mean, yep. I, can remember, I read an article. Ian Baker Finch couldn't break eighty, and this guy yep. was one of the greatest players in the world. David Duvall couldn't break eighty, and he was one of the greatest players in the world. Rory still playing very well. But he hasn't won a major in seven years. This is a hard sport, right, Ed? Oh, absolutely. Uh, that's one of the things I always liked about it. Uh, compared to other sports, golf is one of them ones where you have to continue to play well. 
continue to make money and continue to keep your card. Because if you don't, well, next year, there's going to be somebody else to take your place. And then you got to work your way back to the PGA tour. So and that part, I do love, I think it's great competition. It keeps the guys sharp. It's uh, yeah. And it is definitely a hard sport. How's your <laughs> so, game? You doing all right? Yeah. Game's not bad. You know, yeah. You probably I probably don't play nearly enough, do you? No, nah, not at all. It's, uh, not as much as we used to. You're absolutely right. I just get to live vicariously through all the other people golfing every day. Say, that's one of the drag. <laughs> every head pro, and I've known a lot of head pros and been been fond of many of them. They, they're giving lessons. They're working with juniors. Um, they're trying to run the handle the merchandise. I said, talk a little bit about what a head pro does, because I would say you're you're like a you're like the manager of a Dick Sporting Goods store. You're a recreation coach. You're an ambassador. I'm not sure when you fit the game in. Talk, talk about the day in a life of a. Of a I just head thought you were pro. like a psychiatrist. I thought really yeah, that too. That's, that's part of it too. Absolutely, and that's yeah. you know, I appreciate that, Don. It makes me want to pat myself a little bit. But you're right. We uh, we come to work. We manage a pro shop. We manage a forty to fifty person staff. We're we're managing the recreation aspect of it for our local citizens and, and, and scoring and running leagues. We're, we're managing making sure the, the weather. Grass is don't cut. forget the weather yeah. every if day. People, if, yeah. if, if, yeah. if your golfers take don't credit like, for the good days. <laughs> if they don't like the rough or they think the sand traps haven't been handled well that day, they're not searching out the groundskeeper. They're coming to yell at you, right? It's like, hey, that is, that is hell, correct. That trap was all screwed up on 14. But don't yep, hit the absolutely. ball in a trap is what I would say. <laughs> That's what there I, you go. I, I gave sometimes. your answer, Ed. You got that? <laughs> yes, I'll sir. remind everybody, we're with Ed Miller, head pro uh, Forest Park Golf Course. If you haven't played one of the classic fives, I know people are big into to making lists now. The summer mm-hmm. lists are the big things. I want to do this. Well, put on your list, play every one of the classic five courses because they, they really are that beautiful and, and they truly are. How much you, is a day of golf, Ed? If I want to, you want to come out and play next Wednesday, what do I got to do? Like, seriously, if somebody wants to play next week, online, sign up, what do they do and how much is it? Yeah, well, you would go to classic5golf.com or call the pro shop or whatever the classic five courses you want to play and just uh, say, hey, I'm Nestor Aparicio. I want to book a tee time next Wednesday at 11 o'clock. And uh, hopefully we would have a time close to that and we would reserve the tee time for you and your your guest and you would come out and you don't have um, to join the country club, anything like that. I don't have no, to get a no, special car. No. What kind of no. shoes? have to wear special shoes? Yeah. Well, we're, you know, rules, sorry. Any, right. Yeah. Certain, certain rules with the shoes like and rules. the dress code, but probably <laughs> help you. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Don't go yeah. out there looking like a schmo, man. Look, 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 like, <laughs> like, come look, here. look like you've been nah, to the course. Nah, that'll look good. That'll look good. <laughs> look like so, you've been yeah. to the course before. Would you put on a coward shirt and a nice pair yeah. of golf pants? Look, look you like guys you go belong. golf. I'm going to be eating crab yeah. cakes and like zip days and crap. Hey, well, before we can eat a crab cake after golf. So before we let you go, it, I got to, tell you and it's everybody that listens to this show knows that i've got a soft spot for jordan spieth i I, you know whether it's his love of his family and his sister and he just seems like this wonderful young kid uh, who has a pretty unorthodox game i mean he sort of sprays it around but my goodness he's laser around a green i think in getting lost and not to take anything away from colin mark because it was an incredible performance jordan played lights out on yeah, Sunday, yeah. right? In the Absolutely. final of a major. Yeah, now Jordan's game has definitely been trending in the right direction over the last two months. And uh yeah, he looks really good. He looks like he's about to break through again. And um I think that's one of the reasons why people like Jordan's speech, you know, opposite of maybe Morikawa is uh you get to see Jordan hit some neat shots out of the rough, oh, out of the Lord. trees. <laughs> Fade yeah, it yeah. here, hook it there, yeah. run it there. I tell you what though, Ed, I, what was your reaction? And again, those of us who, who play the game and chase the silly little white ball, when he missed those two little short putts on 17 and 18 on oh. Saturday, I yep. turned to my grandson because I was watching with my grandsons, said, mm, boys, <laughs> yep. I don't know what that means. Well, what it meant was that instead of being in a playoff, you finished two shots back. Correct. Right? Correct. I mean, those, those two mm. putts. I mean, we, oh. we all know it's that thing early in the week matters, right? Oh, yeah. Well, it's the old cliche in golf. You know, the uh, three foot putt equals the same as a 300 yard drive. They both count as Just, one. Yeah. And I would have actually it. lost, I would have lost money on speed because after that Saturday finish, you're absolutely right. 
I actually turned to my dad and said, Oh, I think Jordan's done. Oh, and I thought won't. he was going to shoot 78 or 79. Yeah, on, yeah, on so Sunday. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm with you. I said, That's it. Because I'm thinking yeah. of my own brain. My own brain yeah. would be fried. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'd be, I, I, I just chalk it up. I say, He's 78 or 79. Mm-hmm. Shows what he's made yep. of. Hey, hey, Ed, one, one, one other thing that I had on my mind, because my grandsons asked me, and I didn't have a great answer. They look anybody that looks at that course, and I, I joke that Royal St. George Zinger, Paul Azinger made me laugh out loud when he said it's certainly yeah. the lumpiest, bumpiest place I've ever. <laughs> I mean, there's not a straight lie on that course. I mean, the ball is no. either above your feet, below your feet, side hill lie. There's not a there's not a flat lie there. Same with the greens. But my grandson, you know, you're they're able, they like golf and they look at that course and they go, Pop, what's what's that? I mean, they they're used to courses in the United States. They're used to Pine Ridge and, and Clifton Park and Forest. They're used to trees and Swift, yeah, Swift yeah. Pink Fairway. They go, what the pop? What what is that? They do how it do different over there. How do you explain Lynx golf to people, Ed? Well, it's definitely uh it's it's the most natural of golf and meaning that uh, most Lynx golf is uh they don't interrupt the ground. When they lay out a golf course, they just lay out the golf course, shape the fairway. And they leave the mounds and the fairways and the rough. And, uh, you know, obviously they cut the grass in the fairway shorter than the rough, but because there's a lack of trees and stuff like that on most links courses, that's where they let the fescues grow up on the side. And, uh, yeah, to me, it's neat. They'll tell you that, uh, that course was over 130 years old. So I'm sure nature and wind and everything has kind of helped shape some of that mounding, but, um, I think it's fa- fascinating. I think it's pretty unique. There's a couple courses in Maryland that are close to that type of that type of golf, so you can get out there and play it once in a while. Well, where but, would um, they be, Ed? Well, you have Renditions Golf in Annapolis, yeah, which is uh, yeah, it's got some lookalike uh, British Open copy holes. So is really good, and um, I've even been on that course. Oh, have you? There you go. And uh, you know they got some American holes too, but uh, you know half of the holes are definitely a Lynx style. And then um, you got a couple toward the ocean. Hunter's Oak used to be a link style, only had one tree on the golf course, uh, stuff like that. Actually, if you come and play Forest Park lately, Don, I have uh, we have fescues on about uh, 30 acres out here now. So there you go. We'll give you yeah, we'll give you the look of it anyway on a few holes. There, so. <laughs> there, there you go. Well, you know, the other thing that happened to head over the weekend, right, was that somehow the British Open ended up with San Diego weather. I mean, I like I yeah. like the open mm-hmm. where they got the ski hats and the yep. coats and everybody's bundled up in their parkas and the wind is 80 miles an hour. This yep. was San Diego weather. What the heck happened there? You're absolutely right. When I was watching uh, the pregame on Wednesday, so to speak, and I realized half the players were in shorts in the practice round and there's no yeah. wind. And, uh, and actually the grass was a lot greener than normal too. So it's been a, it's been some mild weather over there. We didn't get the crazy bounces that you normally get in a British Open, but um, that probably explains some of the scores too. The scores were pretty low out there, especially That's, Sunday. There was a lot of rounds in the 60s. So yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty remarkable. Wind well, changes yeah. all that. You can't shoot in the 60s in a wind, right? No, no. That's uh, you know, going back to the link style course, Nestor. That's uh, most of those courses need some wind. That's part of the defense to the golf course especially the modern tour players, when you make it soft like that and green, no wind, they, they, it's Muscle like up. a chip and putt. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, boom. Absolutely. Need yeah, some let's, wind. Let's, let's go right mm-hmm. in. Nestor, I love, I'll always love catching up with Ed and hearing about Forest Park and the classic five. We said, everybody put it on your bucket list this summer, get out there. And even if you haven't played call Ed at Forest Park, get some lessons. Absolutely. It's a fun game. Go chase the little white ball. Ed, you think you could fix me? <clears throat> Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, All right, man. Well, yeah. <laughs> you're obviously hill charger. <laughs> Ed Miller joining us here for the Classic Five, along with former Baltimore County Executive Don Moeller, my partner. Crime. I'm wearing my State Fair shirt, but I still have my Fadley's gear around here. If you uh, want to ship a crab cake, great way to do that with our friends at Fadley's uh, and our friends at Wise Markets and Royal Farms. All of our sponsors have put together and put me on the road for this month of August. Thirty crab cakes in thirty days. I'm going to eat more than 30 crab cakes. Trust me, because I've looked at this and and my wife keeps saying, you know, you could go back next summer. It's Maryland. It's not like we're going to like Australia and you can't go back, but uh, we're going all over the state of Maryland looking for a great crab cake and some great conversations. It's all coming together at WNST AM 1570 Towson, Baltimore. We never stop talking Baltimore positive.